Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we're we'll doing my Copa America 2024 predictions. I want you guys to do your predictions in the comments below. And real guys, like and subscribe, guys. Helps the channel grow. And yeah, guys, if you guys don't know, I will do extensive Copa America coverage on this channel. Live streams, match your reactions, your predictions, all the good stuff. This is a channel for you. Anyways, let's start with the first group we got here is Group A, guys. RJ Canada, Chile, Peru. I think I, it goes without saying RJ will top this group. with They'll cakewalk this group. I think RJ for me is simply one of the best teams in South America. That The players they have is just unbelievable. And Messi, Lautaro Martinez, Juan Alvarez, like the team is stacked. Um, it is surprising that Paulo Debella didn't get called up because he's one of their best players, of course. Uh, but he didn't get called up, which was kind of a surprise. And I think for Argentina, the only real issue they have in this group is the fact that uh, they don't have a. They, I don't know who's gonna be the striker. Is it gonna be Latoro? Gonna be Julian Alvarez? For me, I think it should be Julian Alvarez. But you know, Latoro could start. But yeah, Argia for me should top this group. And the last in the group I have is Peru. I'm sorry to say, I don't don't see him. I I just don't see Peru doing much. I just think for me, Peru is just simply too weak, and I just don't see enough goal scoring threats. When you're having to rely on Advancula as your goal scorer, it's sad. I know he's a fantastic player. I know he is versatile. But the guy isn't even truly a uh, winger. He's a right back. That's the issue. And I feel like that's the problem for uh, at Peru is that they're having to rely. They're also having to rely on Paulo Guerrero as well. And I, I'm sorry, the guy is washed. At 40 years old, I just don't see Peru doing it. So I think Peru is going to uh, finish bottom. Now, second and third is where things get interesting. I'm going to go with Chile to finish second. And the reason why is because I think Ricardo Goreca is an amazing coach. I think he's a fantastic coach. I mean, just look what he did with uh, Peru. He got Peru to the Copa America Final 2019. And I feel like for me, this Chile team, they still have some good players, even after the Golden Generation. Sure, I know a lot of those players are not the same as they used to be, but they still have good players. Like, you know, I still think Alexis Sanchez is still good. Vidal is still good. And these two players for me are good. And then you also have Dario and Rosario. They have some young uh, players coming through. I think there's another player that plays at CSK in Moscow. He's also good as well. And I think for Chile, they have the right balance of youth and experience, right? And I think that's the right combination. Canada, for me, I just think that there's too much uncertainty with Canada. The team is amazing on paper. When you look at the team that they have, like you've got Ikone, you've got Astakio, Alfonso Davis, John the David, Crepo. It's just like there's so much uncertainty with Canada because I don't know what I'm going to get with Canada. I don't know what to expect with Jesse Marsh. He only just came in a few weeks ago and has hadn't had much time to work with the team. Whereas Ricardo Gareca has came in, you know, I think beginning of the year. So he has he had plenty of he has had more time to prepare. So I think for Chile, they're going to finish second. And my confidence prediction, not really, because I think Canada could also do it as well. But I just have Chile slight favorites over Canada. But it, it definitely can go either way. I wouldn't be surprised. Group B. I think it goes without saying Ecuador is, for me, the best team in that group. They, I mean, look at the players they have. They have, like, Hincape, Bacho. They have uh, Caicedo. They have Presido. Like, this Ecuador team. And, oh, I forgot to mention Kendry Pius and Moises Caicedo. Caicedo is a very good player for Ecuador. Sure, his Chelsea form may be a bit questionable, but for Ecuador national team, he's a baller. He's a beast. And I feel like this Ecuador team is amazing. My only two criticisms I have with Ecuador is the fact that this team is the team just doesn't have a good attack. I feel like their attack is very bad. Their attack is very limited. And also the coach, Felix Sanchez, who I think is a bomb. He's a bomb of a coach. I don't rate him whatsoever. And I think for Ecuador, another thing that's also kind of holding me back for them to do really well in the Copa America is the fact that Ecuador just don't have a good history. I think them and Venezuela are the two nations who have never won the Copa America before in their history. Fourth place line in the group I have is Jamaica. I think Jamaica will simply implode, as they always usually do. I think Jamaica, for me, sure, they have some good players on paper, like the Jamari Gray, like the Andre Blake. But I just think for Jamaica, man, there's just too many issues off the pitch, too many issues on the pitch. I mean, look what look what happened to Leon Bailey. The guy simply refused to play for the Jamaica national team, and he's one of their best players. Also, the black leading call Pinock is crazy. And, yeah, I just think Jamaica, for me, is a complete mess, despite having a good team on paper. Now, second and third is where things get tough. And I'm actually going with Venezuela. I'm going to go with Venezuela second place. And the reason why is because I feel like Venezuela, for me, is more stable. Sure, the players they have is not comparable to Mexico. You could probably argue Mexico players are better on paper. But I think Venezuela, as a team, is a better team because they're more stable. They're more well-organized. I know what I'm going to get with Venezuela. They're tough to break down. Sure, they may not be as prolific. But defensively, they're decent. 
And I like the players like Herrera. I like the players like Sotaldo, Darwin Machis. I also like the goalkeeper as well. And for Mexico, I just think for Mexico, it's just I, I the defense is just not that great. The attack is very limited. You have to rely on Santiago Jimenez, who just hasn't really shown up for Mexico. And the thing is with Mexico is just that there are just so many issues with them. I, I like, you know, Lozano, one of their best players, the 2018 World Cup is just a just a meme nowadays. He didn't even get selected. Gamal Ochoa didn't get selected, you know. Having to rely on Henry Martin, who is, I think is, is terrible for the national team. I just don't see it for Mexico. I think they're going they're they're going downhill, and we saw the signs after the 2020 uh, 21 Gold Cup. You know when they fact they got grouped at the World Cup, which was crazy, and I think they could get grouped at a Copa America, which would be crazy. Guys, getting grouped and back to back major competition international would be a disgrace, and yeah, it would be terrible for Mexico. But yeah, I have Mexico to finish third, um, and yeah, let's see if they can prove me wrong. Uh, group C, I got bottom of the group is Bolivia. I don't even think I need to explain this. They're just simply not good enough. Uh, maybe the Volkerberg lab could do something. But yeah, for Bolivia, there's not much to say. They're, they're altitude merchants. Panama should finish third. They have too much. Uh, they have better team than uh, Bolivia, in my opinion. They have some players, good players like Carasquilla. Morello is decent. I rate Thomas Christensen. But I think Panama is simply too weak for Uruguay, United States. Now, top of the group I have is Uruguay. Uruguay, for me, is too stacked. That Uruguay team they have is insane. Valverde, De La Cruz, De Rescata. Then you have Suarez and um, De, uh, Nunes. Then you also have then you also have uh, Araujo, Rochette, uh, Bentacor. Like, the Uruguay team is stacked on paper, and I think they have a solid team. I think they have a solid team, and I think Uruguay will top this group. Now... Second place for me is United States. United States for me will do the will do the bare minimum like we always do. We'll beat Panama, we'll beat Bolivia, but then we're gonna fail against Uruguay because Uruguay is simply a better team than the United States. And this is what always happens to United States guys that we can beat up on the teams we're supposed to win, but when it comes times for teams we're not expected to beat, we typically lose. And that's why I fear with the United States. And that's that's because the thing is USA has a good team on paper. You have uh you have Christian Pulisic, you have Yunus Musa, you have Weston McKinney. You have Tyler Adams. You have uh, Johnny Cardoso. You have a lot of quality players on the team. And the fact that United States is just going to do the bare minimum, the fact that it's just it's just managed by a terrible coach. I just don't have any faith in that coach. And for me, Bielsa is a superior coach than that coach. And by the way, guys, I'm not going to say his name because I refuse to say his name because I'm angry. Um, but yeah, Bielsa for me is a superior coach to the United States coach, 100%. Group D, Group D. I think the ball in the group is going to be uh, Costa Rica. I just don't see it for Costa Rica. Uh, for me, their best player, Kayla Navas, has now re announced retirement, and that's pretty much all hopes for Costa Rica going. Third in the group I have is Paraguay. I just think for Paraguay, for me, they're a good, decent nation. They always give trouble to Brazil, but their defense, their their attack is so bad. And CISO, Alamarian just hasn't clicked. And they have some good players like Gustavo Gomez I really rate highly. But yeah, Paraguay for me just don't have enough firepower in the attack to cause issues to Brazil, Colombia. Although it wouldn't surprise me if they managed to get a nil-nil draw against Brazil. Uh, then first and second, guys. This is tough. I actually have Brazil to come second. I actually have Brazil to come second. And the reason why is because I believe Brazil is going to struggle. Especially in the attacking department of the game. Sure, they have kind of improved this year with Doraval as a coach. And they've got some big results, you know, getting a draw. Uh, against Spain and beating England away. But, guys, these are friendlies. These are friendlies. I, I wouldn't take too much into it. And the thing with Brazil is this. I just – is Vinicius going to turn up? Because that's why I fear for Brazil is like, I don't know if Vinicius is going to turn up in this year's Copa America because the guy has been amazing for Real Madrid. He's probably one of the best players in the world. But the guy is bad for Brazil. The guy is really bad for Brazil, and that's what worries me for uh, v Vinicius. So I, I think Vinicius will not – I don't know if Vinicius will have that impact. And – for me, Endrick is amazing, but can you rely on Endrick to win you a Copa America? I don't know about that. And I feel like Colombia, for me, is way too informed. I think Colombia, for me, is one of the most informed teams right now in the world. I like this Colombia team. They have James Rodriguez that's been amazing. You have Lusomo that's been amazing. Lusimi. They have Munez. Then you have Luis Diaz. The only thing I worry for Colombia is they don't have a good striker. The striker is a bit inconsistent. Bore, I don't really rate but other than that, Colombia is an amazing. They're, they play expansive football. They play direct football. And I think Colombia is a team to look out for. I think they're a sleeper team. I think Colombia could cause a lot of surprise at this year's Copa America. So I think Colombia will top this group. Although I could see Brazil top, 
But I think Colombia, just for me, is just a well more well organized team than Brazil. And I think Brazil will struggle. But who knows? I mean, Brazil could top the group for what I know. It's close. Um, now moving to the quarterfinals, Argentina versus Venezuela. As much as I want to, as much as I think Venezuela could beat Argentina, I think Venezuela is way too weak. I think Argentina should take care of business with ease. And yeah, now Ecuador versus Chile. This is the match where I think this could go either way. In my opinion, this is probably the best quarterfinal match. Uh, but I think Ecuador for me is simply a better team than um, Chile. I think they're more well-rounded. So, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if Chile wins. Uruguay versus Brazil. This is a very interesting one. Very that one could go back and forth. I think Uruguay, for me, just coming into some better momentum. I think they're coming into some better form. So I'm going to go with Uruguay to triumph. And Colombia versus the United States. I don't see how the United States can win this. I think Colombia will win this with ease. Moving to the semifinals, we've got RJ versus Ecuador. RJ should win that one. I think I would, as much as I would love to see Ecuador do it, I think this is where the road ends. And I think a semifinal for Ecuador would be a fantastic achievement. I think RJ is simply too stacked. Now, Uruguay versus Colombia. This is a tough one. Guys, this is a tough one to call because I think they're both kind of around the same level. And because of that, I have a feeling we'll go to Pens. And if it goes to Pens, I have to back Colombia. I have to back Colombia because Colombia is good on Pens. Uruguay is not good on penalties. I don't trust Uruguay on Pens whatsoever. So I'm going to go with Colombia to win. Although I could see maybe Uruguay do it. I wouldn't surprise me. But I think Colombia is just, I think Colombia will win on Pens. And then for the final, guys. Actually, let's do a third place game. Ecuador versus Uruguay. I'll go with Uruguay. Now for the final, guys. Argentina versus Colombia. This is a fantastic final. This will be an amazing final. And in my personal opinion, I think it's the best final you could get. Because I really want to see. Because Colombia have always given a good game to Argentina in the last couple of America editions. Remember, Colombia took Argentina to Pens in the last couple of America. Argentina only triumphed on Pens on that game in particular. This is a tough one. Because as much as people will say Argentina are the heavy favorites and they should do back-to-back, is that back-to-back going to get to Argentina? Because we saw in the la- with the last Copa America final, Brazil were the heavy favorites, especially at home, to do back-to-back, and we all know what happened. Brazil didn't um, live up to expectations, and Argent did it. Could a repeat of that happen? I could see it. I could see it. And I know it might seem crazy to say, and I know a lot of people are going to be surprised I'm doing this. I think Colombia's going to do it. I think because of the fact that I think Colombia will have less pressure in the final than Argentina, I think Argy will have more pressure in the final because they'll be like, okay, we're so close to you back to back. It's set up for us. And then Colombia, I just think the route they've had to get to here will make, uh, will be impressive. And I just think Colombia's going to do it. But it, it's going to be a good final, guys. Like, it's going to be close. I think Colombia will win it in extra time, potentially even go to Pens. As you know, I don't think Colombia could win Pens. I think Argy's too good in Pens. But I think Colombia could win in extra time. I think Colombia could win the Copa America in extra time. So, yes, I'm going to go with Colombia to win this year's. Copa America, guys. So I want you guys to do your Copa America predictions in the comments below, guys. I'm very much looking forward to what you guys are doing. And let me know what you guys think, guys. Let me know what you guys think. So please remember to like and subscribe. And I hope you guys enjoy. Peace out.